Hi everyone, this is Sean. Hopefully everybody enjoyed watching my new introduction video that was made just for today's video. Some of you are also wondering, Sean, why are you wearing that Kevlar helmet? The reason why I'm wearing this helmet is to protect myself from the missiles of insults. These are insult missiles that will be incoming and hate missiles that will be incoming because of the title of this video. <laughs> Let me just take this off because this is really not comfortable. Oh, it was hot in there. Hey guys, in today's video, we are going to be talking about private SWAT teams. I could just hear, feel the hate right now coming in. Private SWAT teams? Why? Why, Sean? We'll talk about the need for the private SWAT team. Please, if you're thinking about just shutting this video off because it already looks silly, please hear me out. We're going to be talking about the need, the requirements in order to be a member of a private SWAT team. Just in case there's some of you guys out there that this stuff excites you and you want to be a member of a private SWAT team or maybe you want to form your own private SWAT team. We'll be talking about requirements. And last but not least, we'll be talking about how do you how do you implement a private SWAT team? What are the logistics involved? And the last portion is really for those of you who either own a private security company or you manage operations for a private security company. So let's get started. Why? Why do we need a private SWAT team? SWAT teams all across America, all across the globe, are disbanding. And why is that? There's the defund the police movement, and there's a whole anti-police rhetoric that is just entroaching on all of these departments. A lot of people don't want to be police officers anymore. They don't want to be law enforcement officers. They don't want to be peace officers. When an agency starts shrinking in size, the first assignments to go are the specialized assignments. You can't just get rid of patrol. Otherwise, you won't have a police department. But you can get rid of specialized assignments, which provide support services to patrol. So the first to go are narcotic assignments, narcotic detectives, the traffic division, SWAT. All these specialized assignments start disappearing. About a week ago, I talked to a SWAT team leader. He said, Sean... We previously had 14 SWAT team members. Now, we only have eight. If they go down to five, five, that SWAT team for that agency is going to be disbanded. The same discussions are being heard throughout America. Guys and gals, SWAT teams across America are being disbanded. That is one of the reasons why we need SWAT teams out there. Now, do we need a private SWAT team? I would argue yes, depending on the type of venue, depending on the type of environment. Most cases, no, but there's some cases we do need a uh, we do need a private SWAT team. We need members of security who are highly trained and able to address just about any type of threat. We need to stop depending on law enforcement. There was a new case that was heard by the U.S. Supreme Court. Well, a couple years ago, Supreme Court said this. Law enforcement does not have a duty to protect you. They don't. Whenever I think about the need for a SWAT team, I think of October 1st, 2017. I actually have a couple of subscribers that survived that event. If October 1st, 2017, if it brings some emotions to you, you're probably thinking about the Route 91 massacre. We lost so many awesome people that day. We have somebody that is shooting at an elevated position that is just massacring just hundreds of, of, of innocent people who just want to enjoy their time at the concert in Las Vegas. It's horrible. So what, what became of this? Well, Las Vegas Metro has probably seen this all along. Hey, you guys need to hire on duty Las Vegas Metro officers for some of these events. Even before the shooting happened, I would go to Las Vegas and I would wonder what is stopping somebody from from reserving one of these 
these hotel rooms that are in elevated position? What is stopping this person from just taking everybody out from an elevated position? And looking back at the Route 91 massacre, there was nothing stopping them. Could you just imagine, and I don't want to be a what-if person, what if that we had a private SWAT team who were able to address the situation right then and there, who practice on a monthly basis, maybe a weekly basis, in stopping the threat? We don't need Las Vegas Metro SWAT to go in this room and stop this person. What we need is people who are already there. Security. And security who are well trained to address the situation. So let's talk about the requirements. Those of you who are watching the video, you might be interested in being becoming a SWAT team member, a private SWAT team member. As for requirements, I look at Caesars Palace Incorporated and MGM Grand Resorts Incorporated for a role, to be role models for us, to be an example of what do you need to be a private SWAT team member? And I'm gonna disappoint a lot of people watching this video, um, but there might be some there might be some pathways to get in if you don't have this type of experience. So what I'm seeing with the requirements, and I'll leave a link in the description box so you guys can review the requirements. Um, when I put everything together, it looks like you need somewhere between three to five years of experience in either one of these sectors. Law enforcement, military police, or some type of military special operations experience where you're dealing with some type of anti-terrorist um, op operations, anti-terrorism operations. Those are the ways to get in. Now, I went to Flamingo not too long ago, and I, aside from having a great time over there, I saw these guys on the floor, two of them, it looked like they had hard plate armor, maybe not, but they're all tacked out. I thought that they were part of the local SWAT team, maybe Las Vegas Metro SWAT. Um, on the back was a logo that said SRT. In my line of work, SRT stands for Special Response Team. This is basically maybe an, an entry-level team or even a SWAT team member. And I thought that was really strange. And then I saw a patch on them that didn't look like a law enforcement agency patch. So anyhow, uh, when I left Flamingo... And I went and I went back home. I started researching them. Well, this is the SRT team is a, is a special tactical unit that Caesar's Palace has, and MGM Grand they have something called ERT. I think it stands for Emergency Response Team Member. And I also started to think, wait a minute, okay, they have these tactical units. There is no way that their leadership like doesn't have SWAT experience. MGM Grand hired five former SWAT officers. If you don't know Las Vegas Metro, that department, their SWAT team is full-time. Every year, they conduct about a little bit over 300 um, raids. Over 300. And they perform about 50 hostage rescues a year. They're a full-time SWAT team, and they do this for a living, you guys. They are the best. Um... In addition to the five, the in addition to the five members that were Las Vegas SWAT, um, you also have somebody that was a, a Marine Corps sergeant with combat experience, and somebody that came from the Navy that had some anti-terrorism -ter experience. That's your leadership. So if that's your leadership, you're gonna have to have you're gonna be hiring people that have similar e experience. But don't be d too disappointed now. There's a pathway around this. Um, so what I started to do is I started to go on LinkedIn and search some of these some of these SRT members, see what their backgrounds are. Um, for for MGM Resorts, all of them had a military background, military police background, um, or just a law enforcement background. But when I looked up Caesar's Palace Resorts or Caesar Palace Incorporated. Uh, there are some people there that didn't have a military background. They had a security background, casino security background. And I seen some um, some guys in there that had an MOS that had nothing to do with military arms. They had nothing to do with military police, infantry, none of that. 
So what I what I found out this is the pathway to get in. If you know somebody, you have a chance of getting in, especially Caesar Palace. Caesar will grant you entry if you know somebody, if you know Caesar himself. <laughs> no, guys, on a serious note, um, I started to do more research. So Caesar's Palace uses a training organization called Zebra Tactical Solutions or something like that. Um, that's where I got a lot of these pictures from that I sh in the preview video. And I started to look up the, the who the leaders are. Well, the owner of the company was a former Las Vegas Metro SWAT officer. So if I'm a former Las Vegas SWAT officer, I probably have connections at Las Vegas Metro SWAT. Um, and I, I am probably well connected with the leaders of these SWAT teams, these private SWAT teams. So if I see somebody, oh, by the way, that company has, has a security company. So if I have a security company that's performing way above standards, that doesn't have any military or law enforcement experience, but has performed awesome for my company, as a former SWAT team member, if I contact another former SWAT team member, um, my word is golden. If this person Fs it up, my reputation is on the line. That's why I'm going to choose the best person. I'm going to handpick for you who would be the best person on your team. So in a way, that doesn't make sense. So if you don't have no law enforcement or no military experience, it looks like one way to get in there is is work for this company called Zebra Tactical Solutions or something to that effect. And they provide um, SWAT level training. So these are those are the requirements, guys. Between three to five years, military um, with experience in anti-terrorism operations, law enforcement, it doesn't say what type of experience, but just law enforcement in general. Security will not count as law enforcement. It obviously depends on what you did in your security career. Um, and what else? Military police. That, those, are, those are the pathways on how to get in. Let's talk about implementing a SWAT team if you are a security company. Guys, I don't think that there's a high demand right now for private SWAT teams. Unfortunately, the only time that people think about a private SWAT team is when there's a tragedy. So when Uvalde, when the tragedy of Uvalde, Texas unfolded, um, there started to be more, it looks like that the media was um, doing more media stories on the SRT teams in Las Vegas. Um, and, and seeing them do different active shooter drills right after Uvalde. But when something doesn't happen for a while, I can easily see a lot of these tactical units be disbanded. And it's it just ridiculous, guys. It's politics. It's, it, get, it angers me so much for companies to do this, to start disbanding their tactical training because, not, because nothing happened. It, it, it's so uh, upsetting. But I will say this, as a security company owner, there's not much of a demand. You are going to have to sell it to the client. Like, hey, you know what? I know it might cost this much to hire us, but you're going to per you're going to reduce cost. And I'm talking about cost of human life. And if that doesn't motivate them, well, maybe the dollar signs will motivate them. Just about every state has case laws that require an employer, I'm sorry, an employer, um, a property owner, to provide a safe environment for patrons on the property, especially hotels. There's been a lot of case studies where if there's in, in, insufficient lighting, there's no security, and there's some type of rape or sexual assault that happens. The owner is responsible for that, that incident. You could put as many signs as you want. Owner's still responsible. And that's how you're going to have to sell it to them. Like, hey, you know what? This case, they awarded $20 million to the plaintiff. Services for today's SRT or ERT team will only cost you two thousand dollars or five thousand dollars. So you have to sell it that way to the client. You have to really educate them. Like, why is a private SWAT team necessary? Um, I believe that if you have a private SWAT team, you should have a military background or police background that's consistent with the level of training that these guys need in order to be efficient. Um, if not, then you can always hire a, a consultant and these guys need to go through ongoing training. Um, one thing that I see is the inability to recruit, um, 
the proper people, you guys. I mean, I don't know how much Caesar Palace or MGM Resorts are paying their SRT members, but $20 an hour or even $25 an hour is probably not going to cut it from somebody who has risked their life in, in the military, been through different operations, um, a SWAT team member who retired, um, or a member who has uh, who has um, experience as a SWAT team member re retired, when they're getting paid thirty dollars an hour in retirement and a loan for the rest of their life, um, maybe even if they're current, they're probably getting forty dollars an hour, thirty dollars an hour, maybe fifty dollars an hour, and you're going to go over there and pay them twenty dollars an hour to twenty-five dollars an hour. I don't think you're going to get a lot of people, and I could see checking some of their resumes on LinkedIn. Uh, I'm impressed with some, but I'll, most of them, I'm not really impressed with their backgrounds. You guys, there's, they're getting what what they can. Now, the awesome thing about having such experience is you can, you can, you can select the best person from the job based on your experience on training other people on on maybe SWAT teams or specialized operations. Um, I do believe that you can choose the best out of a group that does that has minimum experience. And it looks like some of these, this is what some of these companies are doing. Um, are these SRT units, are they gonna be your, your true SWAT team? I, I don't think so. I, I, don't, I don't think the client's willing to pay for that. And I don't think that that most company owners have the money to to spend in training. What I mean by full time SWAT team, and I know I I, I did the quotation mark symbol. Um, this it's my understanding that the SWAT team that they have, they may not have the same tools as Las Vegas Metro SWAT. I don't think that they can conduct explosive breaches. Um, I think that their armored vehicles, if they're even armored, or their vehicles, they're they're very limited in protection. Um, Guys, Las Vegas SWAT, they have uh, all types of capabilities. I don't think that you can compare an SRT team in Las Vegas that works for a casino to Las Vegas SWAT. There's no comparison. But there's a time and place for SWAT. I think that an SRT team is valuable as long as they can pin down this person or take them out. I highly, I strongly believe that if we had an SRT team at the MGM, I'm sorry, the, the, the Mandolin Bay, they could have stopped this person from taking out more people, a, a team that, that that's trained. Because these members are, are are trained to clear hallways, clear hotel rooms. They have the access keys to get in, and the training, and weapons. I think, I think Caesar Palace, they're armed with rifles. Now I I didn't see them with rifles last time I seen them, but I'm sure that they're accessible somewhere. All in all, guys, I, I personally, I would not sign up for any of these assignments unless I really needed a job. I just don't see myself standing 8 to 12 hours a, a day with all of this gear. Maybe it was a patrol assignment where I'm patrolling, I'm getting in another vehicle, I could take a lot of rest breaks, maybe. But I just I just don't think that I'll be able to hold all that equipment um, 8 to 12 hours a, a day for one year straight, two years straight, 10 years straight. I think it's going to play a toll on your body. I think that a lot of the SRT members, they're going to be swapping in and out. That's just my thought. What do you guys think about private SWAT teams? Is this something that's just a fantasy? Is there any place at all in private security? Or do we need to just keep depending on law enforcement? Okay. I believe that somebody that's trained with a precision rifle that's able to take out targets to a thousand yards should be assigned to some of these venues. Yes, private security. Okay, we can we can get them from all walks of life. Somebody who's able to do this. We can't. We need to stop depending on law enforcement. Stop depending on SWAT teams. I'm not saying that a private SWAT team replaces law enforcement agencies, SWAT teams. I'm not saying that at all. But we need to start being able to address the threat. We're security because we need to make people feel more secure. Let me know what your thoughts are. Looking forward to dialogue. Take care.